Hey everyone, how are you? Um, this is Makeda Valletta, live from New York City on my IG page, Makeda Valletta Travels. I'm in Times Square right now. I decided to have a seat. Um, this is one of the dope things about New York. There's just so many places to just stop and sit, right? So I'm on Times Square, and I really am not a fan of Times Square. I like most New Yorkers. But I just wanted, I just wanted to share something really dope. Because, you know, I was just in Harlem on 125th Street. Um, now I'm in Times Square, two very busy areas in New York. A lot going on over here. Um, but the dope thing is that it's legal to sell weed on the street now. Like, literally, I'm on 125th Street in Harlem. And on, in Harlem, there's a bunch of vendors outside selling shea butter, cocoa butter, jewelry, clothes, hats, bags, artwork, all types of stuff on 125th Street. There's no place in America like it, okay? And that's only one area in Manhattan that's like that, where you have people selling all kinds of things. But 125th Street for blocks, you have black vendors selling things. And today I went over there, and this guy had a table out with all this different weed, and he kept saying, Dykeman, Dykeman, right? So for those of you who don't know, the best weed in New York is uptown, okay? That's always been known. In Harlem, Washington Heights, that's where the best weed in New York is. That's why Biggie even said on, on Dykeman, I ate it, like, in, um, or I can't remember that, that was his, his, uh, his exact words, but he mentioned Dykeman. The best weed is uptown. Dykeman is even, in, in Manhattan, you have Harlem, then you have Washington Heights, and then you have Dykeman. That's a, the northern part of Manhattan Island, which I think is the dopest. So I saw a dude selling weed uh, on the street, you know, with the whole table out, you know what I'm saying? And then now I'm in Times Square, same thing. Dudes out with a table, all these different kinds of weed they're selling, and it's totally legal. Because the rules in New York now is wherever it's legal to smoke cigarettes, it's legal to smoke weed. So in New York, just so you know, if you're a weed smoker, you can walk down the street and smoke a blunt. You can smoke it in front of the cop's face. It's not illegal. They cannot pull you over because of it. They can't even search your car because they smell a weed smell. That's not even a reason to search your car anymore in New York. Now, a lot of the cities that have legal weed, they don't have New York's laws. It's not like, I think in Chicago, weed is legal, but it's not legal to smoke it outside, which how does that make sense, right? Uh, there are a lot of cities like that where weed is legal, but it's not legal to smoke in the public. In New York, anywhere it is legal to smoke cigarettes, it is legal to smoke weed. And then you can have up to two ounces on you, which is more than any other state or city. And it's legal to just be selling it and delivering it. Okay? And I got that cannabis oil that is in, in tinctures that is very medicinal. That can be, if you don't follow my other page, The Body Scientist, I talk about that a lot. Um, how you can use cannabis oil and tinctures for a lot of things. Yeah, and Atlanta is decriminalized but not legal. Yeah, Atlanta, mm, Atlanta is so overrated. But yeah, New York's laws, I mean, even walking around here, it just smells like weed everywhere. I love it. You just smell it. I mean, people already kind of smoked weed outside of New York before on the sneak tip, especially uptown, but it wasn't legal. Now it's completely legal, okay? So just know if you come to New York, you could spark up anywhere. You don't have to be afraid of the police. You could smoke it right in their face. You're not breaking the law and they can't do anything. And to see people just selling weed out, like New York be on their hustle. So I just love it. I just love it. So I just want to let you know that for all my weed lovers out there. You know, New York doesn't have dispensaries. I think New York is supposed to be working on that. They don't, they don't have dispensaries here, but it's everywhere. You hope New York's law is the prerequisite for all other states? Well, there are a lot of other states that have legal weed before New York, and they didn't have that, so maybe, maybe they'll change it. I don't know. But I know, like, weed culture in, in California and, like, Colorado... I feel like they, you know, they have a lot of dispensaries and they have really good weed and they have, um, they have, you know, all kinds of strains. New York is not like that with the dispensaries. We have good weed, but we don't have like 85 different choices that you have on the West Coast.
And see, I'm even sitting here. Hold on. I'm just showing you. I, I, I've never been like, you know, I haven't been. I, most people from New York aren't really crazy about Times Square. Um, but I haven't been over here in a while. And it's kind of changed. Um, I'm all, another thing I, I'm surprised about is that nobody's blown this thing up, which just goes to tell you, show you how much New York police pay attention because it would be disastrous. But as I walk through, I'm reading this book too. Marijuana, the Forbidden Medicine. And then I'm just smelling it in the air everywhere. And New York is just extra. Ooh. There's so much going on. Hold on, wait. I flipped the camera. You see, oh, you can't see the guy on the bike with the people in it. They're listening to music. I don't know. New York is just a very lit place. There's no city like it. Like, you know, I travel a lot. New York is very unique. Whenever somebody says New York is overrated, not true. And um, New York inspires me, especially money-wise and business-wise. Hey, Gerald. Yes, a lot of people are out. It's Times Square. There's always a lot of people out. Um, I always avoid Times Square, but I had to come over here for something, and I have to go to the Lower East Side, which is a whole other lit-ass area in New York. Let me tell you something. New York, at any given moment, has 10 neighborhoods that are, like, lit, okay? Definitely Times Square, okay? That's, that's always a given. But then you have the Lower East Side. You have the Upper West, you know, the Lower East Side, Greenwich Village, you know, the Soho area. Um, you can go to... Um, Fort Greene, Clinton Hill, Brooklyn, you know, Bedside, Brooklyn, and it's lit. But, you know, just walking through here just inspires me. It's like all these businesses, all this money being made. And no matter how expensive New York is, more businesses pop up. People make money. So New York is a real money city. And in a real money city, people don't walk around trying to show off and floss like they do in Atlanta. That's why I don't think of Atlanta as a real money city. I'm like, people who really have money, they don't do that. But anyhow, I think I shared my point. If you are a weed lover, a cannabis lover, and you are looking for places to go and travel where you could just be free and not be harassed, New York is where it's at. Our weed culture is dope. If you've never seen the documentary um, Grass is Greener by Fab Five Freddy, it's on Netflix, you should watch it. And it talks a lot about the history of weed and prohibition in this country in New Orleans and New York, particularly Harlem, and play very important roles in that. And so we've always had good weed here. So it was just dope. So I wanted to share that. Um, if you've never been to New York, you should come visit because it is one of the dopest cities on earth. And if you're coming and you want to know where you should go and what you should check out, I'll let you know. This is my city. I live in, I live in Chicago now, but this is my city. Yeah, um, yeah, um, the prohibition of marijuana was connected to Mexicans and jazz culture in New Orleans, right? They wanted to, they thought that if the white girls smoked weed, they would have sex with the black uh, jazz musicians. And so it was, it was associated with jazz culture in New Orleans and Mexicans. And back in like, I don't remember if it was the 40s or the, there, I don't know when Mayor, Le, I should know this, I'm from New York. When LaGuardia was mayor of New York, he did a, he had a study conducted, a very thorough study on um, weed. And he found that it wasn't addictive. It didn't, it wasn't a gateway drug. It didn't lead to criminality. And that it had many medicinal uses. And this was published way back, I don't know if it was the 40s or the 30s or the 50s, I don't know what year when LaGuardia was mayor. And um, then it was associated with jazz culture in Harlem. And all the jazz musicians smoke weed and to help them be creative, you know, like many of the artists I know smoke weed and athletes, right? And it's a very interesting documentary. It shows how all the jazz musicians in New Orleans and in, in, um, Harlem were making songs about weed. But they were calling it all these different things, like jive, and they had all these different words for it. But a lot of the songs were about it. So you definitely should check out the documentary. It's a very interesting documentary. It's called Grass is Greener, and it's on Netflix. But anyhow, I'm not one to do videos and walk down the street at the same time. But uh, I'm going to keep on walking. 
to my train. And this is the, uh, the dope thing. Almost all the drug laws are racially based in the U.S. as Nixon's chief of staff admitted the war on drugs in the 70s was to target the Panthers anti- Yes, you're right about all of that. And it starts even before that. With um, that dude that was harassing um, Billy Holiday. Um, I forget what his name was. Okay. Um, yeah, so that, that's Bryant Park over there. I'm not going to walk over there, but right in the next block is Bryant Park. That's where you have... Um, that's where they have uh, Fashion Week. I'm about to get on this train right here. See? Going down to Times Square. Not Hoover. It was some... Yeah, maybe him too, but no, there was somebody else. Um, I think his name started with an A. I forget. Um, but yeah. And then there's a Whole Foods right here too. Um, right here in Times Square. I actually need to go in Whole Foods for something, but I'm like... I have to go to the Lower East Side. I might go to that one. Maybe I go to this one since I'm right here. But uh, no, like, you know, it's not... What you taking a picture? No, I'm not taking a picture. Sorry. See, people, people in New York always talking. See, people selling shit. See, this is the reason why I don't like walking down the street on the camera because people say New Yorkers don't talk to you, but they do talk to you. They talk to you too much. I was in the bus earlier. This old man would not stop talking to me. And I'm trying to be nice. You know, you try to be nice to the old man. But I wanted him to shut up. So people in New York definitely do talk to you a lot. And if I walk down the street with a camera, for sure. So let me just show you. That's Bryant Park across the street. You can't see. People think that I'm a tourist because I got my camera out. Like, I ain't no damn tourist. But that's Bryant Park over there. You can't really see it because the camera is. Yeah, Anslinger. That's his name. Anslinger, yes. Yes. And Slinger. Um, yep. Henry Ann Slinger or Harry Ann Slinger. Yes. He was very racist and had a lot to do with the prohibition laws um, dealing with weed. So, you know, I'm glad a lot of that is starting to get squashed because marijuana is medicinal in so many ways. But, um,. Yep, hold on. Once again, that's Bryant Park. The camera's not really showing you the park very well. But Fashion Week that happens in New York happens right over there. And um, this is not my favorite part of New York. This is Midtown. I don't love it over here. But um, I'm going to say bye because I'm going to go in the store, okay? Have a good evening, people. <laughs> bye.